Welcome back to the Museum of Art. Thank you for joining us again for um, our mobile Facebook Live. Um, today I'd like to show you my very favorite painting in the exhibition, Ren the Heavens, Selections from the Permanent Collection of Religious Art here at the Biri Museum of Art. This exhibition will be on view for another year after we reopen in the fall, so please come and see this and other works in person. Um, this work is by Franz Hittenbach, a German a Nazarene painter, a group of early 19th century romantic artists that sought to re-establish spirituality in art. He was a personally very devout Catholic who, in fact, rejected any offer or commission to paint mythological or pagan scenes in favor of religious works such as this. This work is called Mater Christi, the Mother of Christ and is a perfect example of Ittenbach's mature style and subject, that of Marian images. Here we see the mother of Christ holding her baby in a loving embrace. And um, as we contemplate you know, the traits of mothers uh, in this month of May, having just celebrated Mother's Day, think of your own mother and the traits that you would um, associate with her. I see a devout, loving mother here who holds her baby in a close embrace, a protective embrace, um, and exhibits traits of unconditional love and absolute devotion. The artist actually highlights these ideas by dressing her in the traditional colors of Mary and blue, representing the heavens um, as the, the, the empress of the queen of heaven, and the, the red color of her dress, which signifies many things, including attributes of motherhood, such as passion and love and devotion, but also references the atonement of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, I mentioned already her gesture, her pose, her embrace, that is truly tender and, um, and endearing, and I think relatable to people on a human level. But there is more. If we look closer, we find that the artist has cleverly included some words, um, somewhat disguised on the hem and the collar of her outfit. Uh, these words are written in Latin, and they say the following. Right here where Jesus' hand rests, it says, Jesus um, Deus me, which means Jesus is my God. And on the bottom, um, the inscription or the embroidery says Magnificat Anima Mea Dominum. Magnificat Anima Mea Dominum. Which means, my soul magnifies the Lord. This comes from the Gospel of Luke, where Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth and basically testifies to her of her devotion towards the Savior. What a beautiful manifestation of discipleship on the part of the Mother of Christ, who, as I said, on the one hand looks devout and loving, but on the other looks concerned and worried. We see a certain heaviness in her face as she um, meditates on her son's fate. The Christ child, on the other hand, looks rather unencumbered and light-hearted. You might even say that he embraces his mother back. He um, comforts her in a way as he wraps his arm around her neck and places his hand ever so gently on that collar with that special inscription. Just look at that little hand and the dimples over the knuckles, uh, over the um, elbow, the folds in this very realistic and believable Germanic little child. The wispy hair on his head, just so indicative of a baby uh, of that age. The beautiful blue eyes as they uh, connect directly with the viewer and perhaps extend this idea of worship, uh, of devotion to us as we contemplate this image. I like how Ittenbach has dressed him in this gray outfit at one, on the one hand, 
realistic and believable, as I said, but on the other, perhaps symbolic of this tabernacle of clay into which Jesus has condescended to begin his earthly ministry and mission. Ittenbach was very much influenced by the Italian Renaissance artists, particularly um, Raphael, but also by the northern Netherlandish painters, such as uh, Van Eyck and others, and sought to combine the idealization of classical Renaissance art that you can see in the features of Mary, very much like, I would say, Raphael's Marys, especially in the Madonna of the Meadows that is in Vienna today, which he would have very likely seen as it hung in the Belvedere Palace at that time, and he had a commission not far from Vienna during his time. But he also studied in Italy and would have seen Italian painters such as Simone Martini of, of Siena and others who also included words written or embroidered on outfits. You can actually, you won't see it here, but carefully uh, pull this up on Google and you will see letters um, on the collar and on the hem of the mantle. The same is true of another artist he would have been inspired by. Um, a century earlier, um, Jan van Eyck was painting the Ghent altarpiece and also embroidered the outfit here with beautiful gems and pearls of God the Father, um, also inscriptions on the throne around him. So clearly well, he was inspired by these other religious painters. But it doesn't end there. The real exciting thing almost begins as you investigate the background of this artwork. I want you to come closer and when you come visit the museum, ask for a magnifying sheet at the front desk and explore the things included in the background. This is one of those northern delights, that of describing details and textures to a great degree. We can see here a couple of buildings, one on the left rather dilapidated and overgrown. It has few windows and a door that is shut. No path that leads to that gate. Next to it is a smaller but brighter building that has an open door and people walking up the steps. It is populated and it is inhabited. A path leads to it on which a woman dressed in blue follows a donkey carrying certain things. And on the right of that is a shepherd playing an instrument, possibly a violin or a flute, with a dog adoring his, his master, along with a, a group of a flock of sheep. Now, it is not hard to imagine that these elements are imbued with a certain symbolic significance. The donkey, of course, foreshadowing Mary and Jesus' flight, um, or rather being reminiscent of it and Jesus' future triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The shepherd, of course, as Jesus being the shepherd and us as the sheep, um, an idea of faithful worship. And then the houses, perhaps being symbols of the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old Testament and the New One ushered in through Christ's birth. Separating the two is a slender, tall, tender tree perhaps a symbol of Jesus himself. It is this combination of um, Italian Renaissance and, and Netherlandish Renaissance painting that made um, Ittenbach such a desired painter in Germany, in Austria, um, and, and, and makes us so happy to have a work of this caliber in our collection. I welcome you to um, see it in person once we are reopened and to continue to visit us and, uh, with our MOA Facebook Lives. And um, thanks so much for your patronage and continued interest in the Museum of Art.